Stubby isn't just a good boy. He will be one of the goodest boys you will ever hear about. Get ready for some fuzzy feelings. Hey, I'm Alex Lemon, and in this episode of Stories of the World, we'll be talking about Sergeant Stubby of the First World War, America's most decorated war dog. But before we get into the story, I'd like to emphasize on two very important points. First, Stubby was a stray dog, and second, Stubby had no formal dog training. In 1917, there was no military dog training program in the US of A. Dog training didn't even become a thing until the 1940s. So when Stubby was on the battlefield, he was learning on the go. When he learned how to sniff out a German spy, which he caught by himself, he wasn't taught by anyone, he just learnt. And on the battlefield, it's literally do or die. I find it so hard to comprehend how this incredible dog not only survived, but he actually made a difference during the war. Now, the reason I wanted to point this out is a lot of videos and articles don't really talk about this point. His achievements are no doubt amazing, but it's crazy to think Stubby didn't have any formal training. Stubby is a very special intelligent dog. He's a one of a kind, and maybe in his mind, his love for his owner and companions allowed him to become so amazing. Anyway, let's get to the story. Stubby is a little bit mysterious. No one knows when he was born or what breed he was. Many people argue that he's either a Bull Terrier or Boston Terrier. He was a stray dog, believed to be wandering the streets in New Haven, Connecticut, scrounging for scraps of food. But his life changed in 1917 when he began hanging around a group of soldiers, members of the 102nd Infantry Regiment, as they trained in the grounds of Yale University. One of the men, a 25-year-old private named Robert Connor, Conroy took a liking to the dog and began to take care of him, naming him Stubby for his stature and tail. During this time, the US military didn't have a dog training program, but regardless, he was taught by the men of the regiment how to salute by putting his paw on his right eyebrow. In September 1917, a few months after Stubby started hanging around the troops at Yale Bowl, the 102nd prepared to ship out. Conroy faced a problem. What to do with Stubby? Dogs were forbidden in the US military and taking Stubby to Europe would be a more overwhelming challenge. In the end though, Conroy decides to smuggle Stubby with him to France. While being smuggled, a suspiciously cute event occurs. The story goes that the dog charmed his way into the good graces of officers who discovered him by lifting his right paw in a salute. Out of hiding and free to roam the freighter, Stubby proved popular with the crew. A machinist on board made Stubby his own set of metal dog tags. By the time the troops disembarked in the port of Savnaza of France's western coast, Stubby was the 102nd Infantry's unofficial mascot. Now we're just going to pause a little bit. I just want to let you guys know, uh, I'll be only going through some of the highlights of Stubby's life because I think if I talked about everything in detail, this video will probably take an hour or two long. Let's keep going. Stubby was involved in many battles while stationed overseas. At first, Stubby just accompanied Conroy on delivering messages on horseback, but by February 1918, Stubby would spend majority of his time on the front lines. Approximately 210 days in total over 18 months. Stubby was able to distinguish friend from foe by their familiar language and smells. Stubby alerted medics to the cries of the wounded soldiers or stayed with them until they died so they would not be left alone. He led disoriented soldiers back to the trenches and once Stubby himself got lost but French troops found and returned him. His keen sense of hearing allowed him to hear artillery shots whining before humans did and alerted to people to take cover. And remember, he had no formal training. He learned all of this on the battlefield, which is absolutely insane. Stubby's first injury was when he inhaled mustard gas, which required medical treatment, but was soon back to the front lines. And what's even more incredible was this incident left him sensitive to the tiniest traces of gas and would later have saved an entire company by alerting the men to wear their gas masks. 
The story goes one morning, while most of the troops were sleeping, the division was assaulted by an early morning gas launch. Stubby first smelled the gas, then ran up and down the trenches, barking and biting soldiers, working to awaken them from their sleep and getting them to safety. His keen nose for gas paid off again when he reportedly averted an attack on a French village. Afterwards, some women from the village sewed him a little chalmers coat, which is hand stitched with Stubby's name and decorated with allied flags. He wore it throughout the war and for the rest of his life. One of Stubby's greatest recorded achievements happened late one night on the Western Front. The incident was later told in Stubby's half-page obituary in the New York Times. And I quote, In the Chairman des Dams, Stubby captured a German spy and saved a doughboy, which is slang for a United States infantryman, from a gas attack. Hearing a sound of stillness of the night, the dog who guarded sleeplessly stole out of the trenches and recognized a German. Attempts by the German to deceive the dog were futile. Seizing the prisoner by the breeches, Stubby held on until help arrived. End quote. Alerted by the commotion, Stubby's fellow soldiers were then able to capture and imprison the spy. For his efforts that night, Stubby was issued an Iron Cross medal that had originally been given to the German spy. Now I've linked the obituary in the description box below, so if you guys want to read the whole thing, go for it. With all the bullets flying around and things exploding, it was only a matter of time before Stubby was seriously injured. He got his first wound on April 1918 during a raid to take Seshpray. Stubby was wounded in the foreleg by shrapnel from a grenade thrown by retreating Germans. He was injured a second time, again from a grenade, this time receiving a large amount of shrapnel in his chest and leg. He was rushed to the field hospital and later transferred to the Red Cross Recovery Hospital for additional surgery. When Stubby became well enough to move around at the hospital, he visited wounded soldiers, boosting their morale. At the end of the war, Stubby returned to America. He was honored with a Medal of Heroism from the Humane Education Society and met with Presidents Woodrow Wilson, Calvin Coolidge and Warren G. Harding. He went on to become the mascot for the sports team at Georgetown University, Washington DC, where Conroy studied law. Sergeant Stubby passed away in Conroy's arms in 1926 when he was about 10 years old. Years old. Now some of you guys might have noticed I haven't mentioned the sergeant rank part of Sergeant Stubby uh, and I'm gonna be honest I don't know if it's true right there was never a consistent information on where he was actually promoted right and I found something really interesting this is from a lady called Anne Borsom who has written two books about Stubby and I quote I'm quite convinced that he was promoted by the internet. It sounds so good we want it to be true. And one of the reasons I think this isn't true is that there is not a single contemporary story from his lifetime and I looked at hundreds of newspaper articles of Stubby. There is not a single one that calls him Sergeant Stubby. He was just Stubby and that was good enough for him." End quote. So it's really hard for me to say, especially with the internet and all the fake news and stuff going on. Uh, but an interesting theory is that the confusion may have come from Stubby's vest, which includes a patch with three chevrons. While they may have represented a sergeant's rank today, they were used in World War One to identify soldiers and apparently dogs with overseas service. So... It's up to you guys, make of it what you will. There are numerous books on Stubby and even an animated movie called Sergeant Stubby, an American hero, which I highly recommend. Uh, and for the people that want to actually meet him, Stubby is actually at the Smithsonian. He's been taxidermy. <laughs> it's just bloody incredible that this stray dog with no formal training went on to living such a heroic life. Uh, and for those of you who want to read more about Stubby, I'll put some links that you can uh, check out in the description box below. So, you know, be sure to check that out. So that's the story of Sergeant Stubby of World War One, the most decorated dog in America. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to hear more stories. Also, be sure to check out my previous videos. I'm Alex Lamb and this is Stories of the World.